Hello and welcome everyone again to another financial analysis video with myself, Moed Amin and Ted Wayman. So in this show, we uh, help you improve your financial acumen and understanding uh, by analyzing the financial statements of famous companies. Uh, and most of these companies that we analyze, probably more than 95% of them, come from requests from you, the viewers. So if, if you have a company that you're interested in, whether you are selling to them or they're a client of yours, whether you're thinking about investing in the company, or even if you're uh, applying to join them and you want to have something smart to say in the interview process, uh, do leave a note in the comment section with your request and put some, put some kind of context behind that. The more interesting the context, the higher up the priority you will you will go. So um, company today that we're going to be analyzing is AO World. Uh, now AO World are a, a, a retail group in the UK uh, and they kind of focus on uh, electrical and uh, domestic appliances. Um, so they deliver their goods through their own kind of in-house uh, logistics process, but they also have selected third parties as well. Um, and also worth noting that they provide ancillary services. So they don't just sell the products. Uh, you know, they will do collections of old products. So they'll kind of give you the new product and take out the old one for you. Um, they will do um, what's called uh, product protection, protection plans, so extended warranties, things like that. So they do cover a few other services about the business around the products as well. So a few things to note about the company as context before we dive into the uh, the financials and also the share price as well. So stick around for that. So they are a penny share stock. Um, and to be honest, the share price has pretty much declined a huge amount since for around February 2021. So stick around. We're going to look into that in a bit more detail. Um, the other thing is that they recently raised funding of £37.3 million, both with institutional investors and public investors as well. Um, and this is basically because of a restructure that they're going through. They're also shutting down the German business as well. We're going to go into that in more detail and help you kind of identify those things if you look at other financial statements as well. Um, and the, the forecast, or at least the plan, is that they're trying to save £25 million by 2025. Now, the situation with AO World, just to give you some context, is they're shifting away from growth and, uh, you know, the, what we're hearing with companies, growth at all costs, and they're moving more, more towards profitability. This is not new information. A lot of companies are going through this now, particularly with the kind of recession fears and, uh, you know, private investors kind of placing pressure on businesses to extend their runway, which basically means extend the amount of money you have and your cash available so that you can protect the business. Um, so we're going to look into that. One of the newest uh, non-executive directors is a gentleman called Chris Hopkins. Sorry, Chris Hopkinson. And uh, he was the CEO of another well-known retail company in the UK called Pets at Home. Now he bought, and this is really interesting, he bought 2 million shares of the business at a price of 43 pence per share, which is about a 38% discount of the price of the share price at the time. Uh, and that's consequently why he became a non-executive director, but he has a lot of experience in the retail industry. So he may have quite a bit of valuable insight and inputs to give to the business that would help them in their growth and in their profitability um, kind of plan. So just some in information there as context, we're not gonna go into too much detail about those things. We're interested in helping you just look at the financial statements and we'll analyze those financial statements for you. Quick note on share price right, as context, but stick around because we're going to talk about that in more detail. So as I mentioned, they've gone through a bit of a decline. They floated in 2014. If you'd invested back then, you'd be sitting on a loss of about 88%. If you'd invested five years ago, you'd be sitting on a loss of 62%. And if you'd invested just one year ago, you'd be sitting on a loss of 81%. So it has gone through some fluctuations, and you're going to see that towards the end of this session. So uh, let's uh, let's fire it over, um, Ted, and uh, share with our viewers what we found about this company and kind of run the analysis with them as well. Well, good to see you, Moeed, and good to see uh, all of our viewers again. Um, welcome, uh, welcome back to our subscribers. Welcome to our new um, joiners. So if you've never seen any of these videos before, then welcome. Please do remember to subscribe, like, 
and share. Um, as Moeed mentioned, most of our videos are based on recommendations by uh, people who are watching the channel, uh, and this is no exception. So uh, here is Matt. Um, Matt, you've asked, can you uh, do AO World? Uh, AO World, a um, uh, nice picture of Matt and his couple of kids. Um, can you do AO World or lookers, please? Uh, and we're going to be looking at AO World. AO Appliances Online. So just so we're absolutely clear, we're talking about fridges, freezers, um, ovens, uh, microwaves, uh, and uh, kind of, you know, dishwashers and all that kind of stuff. So the kind of, the, you know, the, the big um, white label uh, goods. Okay, so um, let's jump into the accounts. So these accounts, very easy to find, they're online, here they are. Um, uh, so you can uh, just Google for AO World um, uh, annual report and accounts. You've got the 2021 accounts. We're now at uh, the end of September, 2022. So we're not gonna be seeing uh, any 22 accounts for a while. And uh, once again, lots of pretty pictures, lots of information to tell you all about the company, who they are, what they do, uh, who's on the board, uh, what their strategy is. Uh, so Moe mentioning a change in strategy, their corporate governance, um, uh, who's joined the board recently, um, uh, and their kind of, you know, their pedigree, so to speak, um, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But we are going to whiz all the way through this um, and get stuck into the numbers. So here we go. Um, we are on, so page 157 takes you 100 page to a it takes until page 157 in order to get down to the actual numbers. Um, and here they are. So uh, we are looking at uh, 2021, which is uh, highlighted for you in green there. Um, and uh, you'll see it says in pounds, millions. Uh, so the revenue, the total revenue uh, is about 1.7 billion pounds okay so that gives us an idea of the size of the company very interesting substantial increase on the prior year so 2020 don't forget 2020 was uh, kind of the uh, lockdown um uh, and uh you know you kind of felt that uh, people uh, you know online retailers were benefiting in lockdown perhaps though um people were feeling a little bit nervous about the future and maybe weren't spending it on fridges and freezers but more on sort of takeouts for example so Anyway, so since 2020, big bounce back, um, big increase, 60% increase in sales, um, and 60% increase in sales means that we see a 60% increase in the cost of sales. So while their gross profit has increased substantially, the gross margin remains at about 16 to 17%. So 17% in 2020, 16% in 2021, which basically means every time you buy a fridge uh, from these guys, and if you pay let's say for sake of argument you pay a uh, thousand pounds for a fridge uh, they will have paid uh, 820 pounds from the manufacturer so that kind of gives you an idea of the kind of you know the margins that they're making so it's not a very big margin and their aim is to say look you know we can do it cheaper online because we don't have to pay for the bricks and mortars and all the staff and the uh, and, and the kind of the you know the rent and the rates for um those uh, uh, those actual physical um uh, places like pc world um uh, or curries where you can go and buy by, um, uh, or, or John Lewis, who we looked at, I think, last week, um, who also uh, you can buy these goods from. Um, so all well and good. However, not so good is um, this number here. So here we have um, the cost of running the business. Um, now, the cost of running the business in the prior year um, meant that they actually ended up making a loss. In this year, it's still a very big number. So yes, they are making a profit. But it's nothing really to write home about. That's a 30 million profit on a one point or operating profit on a 1.7 billion turnover, which basically says they're running at pretty much break even. Uh, not a lot of room for error. So Moe's comment that they're trying to take 25 million uh, out of the uh, uh, of, out of the costs, out of the overheads. That's trying to reduce this figure here by 25 million, which should see this figure here go up by 25 million so from 30 to 40 50 55 million you know even so it's still very 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 tight margin business okay there's really not a lot of profit in uh, in that um down the bottom a uh, little bit of other income uh, probably from money sitting on on deposit um here's their finance costs um uh so you know a little bit of debt suggesting there or some kind of leases um uh and um uh, that brings us down to the profit for the year 
um, uh, there's no tax uh, or very little tax because they're really kind of operating at, at almost break even. So very, very little tax um, uh, and therefore, um, uh, uh, you know, they are they are making that um, uh, they're making that that that, that profit, so to speak. Um, so 17 million uh, pounds of profit on. Uh, yeah, 17 million pounds of profit on, on 1.7 billion of turnover. They're operating at break even. It, it's a really tight business. And, and they're obviously trying to kind of consolidate, reduce the costs associated with, you know, trying to expand um, uh, overseas or into new markets, et cetera, et cetera, uh, and really try and grow that bottom line margin. It's not going to grow hugely um, because that's how they set out their store. You know, they are they're aiming to undercut um, uh, the kind of, you know, the, the, the bricks and mortar, the high street, so to speak. Um, let's go and have a look at the balance sheet. <coughs> balance sheet. Um, so uh, we have here the um, the non-current assets. So these are uh, what we need to run the business. Um, quite interesting, uh, sitting on their balance sheet, their biggest number is this number here, which is the trade and other receivables. Now, this trade and other receivables suggests that um, they are financing uh, the sale of some of these products. Um, so uh, if you take the trade and other receivables, you generally expect them to be here in the current assets. So just to remind ourselves, the current assets, things that we own that are expecting to become cash or already are cash, which is inventory, trade receivables and cash at the bank. Non-current assets, things that we need to run the business like tables and chairs, plant machinery and equipment, uh, which is obviously in here, uh, which is uh, a reasonable size. Um, uh, and plus, um, these are uh, also. So plant, property, plant and equipment, but they, um, they're known as writer's use assets, which basically means, you know, they're on higher purchase. So either if they bought a photocopier, um, it's going to be in here. And if they've kind of, you know, rented a photocopier, it's sitting in here. So those are the kind of, you know, that's what they need to run the business. Um, uh, they've got a little bit of goodwill and we've talked about goodwill before. It sort of it, it arises on uh, acquisition of um, uh, uh, other companies. Um, but this trade and other receivable suggests to me that, um, you know, they are that, you know, they are financing. So they are they effectively um, saying you can buy a fridge from us um, and you, we will let you pay over a, over a period of time. Um, and, and that period of time will mean that they will then earn you know additional interest on that um on that sale they'll charge a, a rate of interest for it you know kind of buy now pay later um so those are the assets total assets are 615 million uh, pounds um a little bit further down we can see the liabilities um we'll just come down to about here so here's the liabilities current liabilities um 432 million now this is our first warning sign um because a kind of very um you know standard liquidity measure is, is to compare current assets to current liabilities so if you have current assets of 374 million pounds and your current liabilities are 432 million pounds to kind of translate that into english uh, basically what it says is for every one pound you owe and have to pay soon you've only got 86p either as cash or coming in as cash soon okay so that's an alarm bell um if we want to look at it on an acid basis or the acid test the quick ratio we eliminate inventory sorry i'm pointing at the wrong um, uh, the wrong bit here we eliminate inventory OK, which is up here uh, and, and the inventory. The reason we do that is that the inventory is the least liquid of your non liquid um, of your liquid assets. So, for example, if you are a supplier uh, to these guys, so if you are sitting in here, if you supplied them with goods and services and you're waiting for your invoice to be uh, paid, they might say, look, you know, um, uh, we've got 67 million in cash. You're thinking, well, you owe me 411 million. You can't afford to pay it. They said, well, we've got some trade and other receivables, people who are going to pay us because they bought the, the fridge. They're going to pay us. And when they pay us, we'll pay you. And you're like, mm, OK, at least the contract is dry. Um, but if they're saying, look, you know, we've actually got to sell um, uh, you know, these fridges, uh, you're kind of looking, well, let's hope that we don't have a cost of living crisis. Um, maybe that's a little bit of a facetious comment um, uh, at this point. But, um, you know, people are starting to see, you know, energy bills go up. They're looking that mortgage uh, payments are going to be going up as interest rates rise into the future, which means that there's going to be less money to spend on fridges and freezers, moving house, buying new uh, dishwashers, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe I'll stick with the, um, the existing one. Um, so, again, you know, we, we can sort of, you know, we do need to 
sort of bring in this number up here and say, look, you know, don't forget that these guys who owe more than a year, ultimately that's going to kind of fall down into, into here. So there is a kind of a pipeline of cash coming in longer term, but even so um, that is a, a little bit kind of, um, you know, that's an alarm bell. Um, and if we look at the acid test, it says uh, it's 0.54, which basically says for every one pound this company owes to its suppliers and has to pay uh, within uh, 12 months, um, it has 54p ignoring the inventory, uh, either as cash or coming in as cash uh, within the next 12 months. So this is a problem for these guys. Now, um, if we go and look at the uh, the uh, auditor's report, which I have to admit we did kind of, you know, we did gloss over, but it's always worth looking at the auditor's report. In the auditor's report, there is a note on going concern. Now, just so we remember, going concern, if you describe a company as a going concern, that is a good thing because it means that it is trading and expected to continue to trade for the foreseeable future. If it is no longer a going concern, then effectively it is closing. It is either going into uh, administration or it's going into liquidation. Either way, that is a problem. So if you buy a warranty from a company uh, and the company goes bust, your warranty is effectively worthless, okay? Worth bearing that in mind. So this is actually relevant to uh, the, um, uh, the customers uh, of uh, companies like AOL. Um, so the auditors say, look, you know, they basically say, look, you know, we, we, we've looked at these accounts and we recognize that, um, you know, the, you know, there are, there are risks out there. We understand that there are risks um, and there's a possibility um, that, uh, you know, you know, for any company that, you know, is going to get into financial problems uh, and, and, and go and go you know, down the, down the plug hole, so to speak. Um, uh, but they said, look, you know, we've looked at the going concern disclosure in note three by the directors, and we believe that, you know, it, it, it does not appear unreasonable uh, for this company to still be a going concern, i.e. Uh, to, you know, to, to say it's still going to be trading, okay? Um, kind of double negative in there, covering themselves. So it's worth just having a little look at note three um, to see what the directors have actually got to say about this. Now, this is actually, now they mention it, they do mention it in their director's report, um, but the director's report is not specifically covered by the auditors, whereas the notes to the accounts are specifically covered by the auditors. And therefore we actually wanna have a look at it. It's on page 662, let me just pull that up. So here we go. So, um, so they recognize, Recognize they've got these net liabilities that the assets, the current assets are less than the current liabilities to the tune of 60 million. Um, and they say, look, you know, we've got, you know, we, we understand this, we've got availability of a revolving credit facility um, uh, that we can draw down on so we can kind of tap up the bank. Um, uh, and we are pretty confident we've done our cash flow statements. So we are pretty confident that we are a going, con we are a going concern and that we can continue to trade. Um, it would be illegal for the directors to um, to continue to trade if they were no longer a going concern. So these guys, it's a bit like you know they're not they're not teetering on the edge, but they're kind of they're wandering around close to the cliff edge. And we just want to be aware that you know that cliff edge exists, so to speak. Um, we did a little bit of analysis on their on working capital requirement, and I'll just read this out to you. So um, their inventory days, it takes them about 28 days to sell uh, their inventory. They get paid uh, within um, uh, they get paid um, you know, relatively quickly. Obviously, there's that um, uh, that uh, 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 the. Um, uh, you know, the, the long term liability as well. So some of that sort of long term uh, uh, financing. Um, but as a general rule, they're getting paid pretty quickly, um, but they are spending 53 days to, uh, you know, on their accounts payable. So it looks to me like if you're a supplier to these guys, they're going to be pushing you to finance their business. So they are pushing back uh, pretty strongly um, uh, in order to, um, uh, uh, you know, fund their business. So just to be aware um, uh, for a supplier that, you know, they're going to have some uh, pretty hard negotiations on their payment terms um, and they're not necessarily going to pay on the terms that they agree. Now, I may be wrong on that. Uh, and if you're a supplier and you have a different experience, then please do let me know. Um, anyway, so there's our balance sheet. Um, and we come down to, so the balance sheet, you know, we've got equity. They do have equity um, in there. 
um, uh, 96 um, million. So they've got a positive balance sheet. Um, uh, Mary, you mentioned that they've done a, um, a fundraising that isn't reflected in these accounts. So that fundraising will have happened in uh, 2022. Uh, and we can see that because there's been really no change in these numbers here. So, um, you know, we'll expect to see that when we do the analysis uh, in the next, uh, uh, in, you know, if, if we do uh, look at these guys again in 2022, we will see that sort of that cash injection. So, you know, these are uh, just to remind ourselves, this is very much a backward looking um, a set of accounts. This is tell us what's happened in the past. Um, uh, and then when we talk about the share price, we're looking at, uh, you know, sort of the market anticipation of what's going to happen in the future. So there's our balance sheet. Um, nothing really to say in terms of movement and equity they're, they're not they're not paying any dividends they can't afford it they're going to keep all the money um in the um in the company so we'll kind of you know we'll, we'll gloss over that uh, and here's our cash flow now um pretty important on the cash flow so the first thing to notice so what we're really interested in here on the cash flow to begin with is the cash from operation uh, operating activity so that's their cash equivalent of the operating profit now they split this between two different types of cash profit one which is the cash flow from the operating activities and two is the cash flow from movement in working capital now movement in working capital is basically looking at inventories payables and receivables so if you buy more inventory you will have less cash their cash their inventory has gone up by uh, six million um, and therefore they have less cash um, if you uh, pay your supply, uh, so if you don't collect from your uh, your customers, um, you'll also have less cash. And what we see here, therefore, is that they are funding a lot of their business through this increase in trade and other payables, which is in effect the increase in the cost of, um, sorry, not the cost, the increase in the amount that they are. Uh, uh, owing to their suppliers so these guys look like they you know they're using their suppliers um in order to fund the business now if that was zero if they did nothing if they carried on paying the suppliers at exactly then they'd end up with a negative cash flow okay so again that's an alarm you, you can't you can't you know use your suppliers to fund your business forever at some point you're going to have to pay your bills there's another little bit of an alarm bell going on there um, within the cash flow um, as for the rest of the um, uh, the cash flow, uh, very little investing going on because they really, you know, they they just haven't got the cash. They're trying to preserve cash, so they're really uh, trying to kind of consolidate rather than trying to um, grow their business. Um, and in terms of the financing, um, we can see that you know they you know they repaid their borrowings. They've gone debt free. There's no debt anymore. They just like you know we, we just got to get out of these borrowings. They are paying some leases, um, uh, and that's basically it. So there is some negative cash flow um, uh, from their financing activity. So the net effect is that they ended up with more cash than they started, and they built the business from seven million in the bank to about sixty-seven million in the bank. So you know the bank balance is going in the right direction, although you know seven million uh, left in the bank at the end of the last year. Basically, they grow it they, they're building it from a very very um low base so these guys um it, it, you know it looks to me like that they're, they're trying to turn a corner that they're, they're trying to just consolidate they're trying to sort of you know sort it all out so to speak um uh, i forget the exact history of this company but it was uh, uh it was launched based on a bet you know somebody uh, i forget the guy's name but he's just he bet his friend that he could launch his friend said no you can't so he did it to prove him wrong and you know here it is and it's you know 1.7 billion of, of, of turnover it, it's trading um you know pretty successfully however um it, you know it has it has some you know financial pains going on um at the back end uh, and and this is the kind of you know this change in the strategy the consolidation that you mentioned uh Moeed, is all about trying to sort that out so let's have a look at the share price this is what it looks like so um you know as Moeed said um it's been a pretty rocky ride um, and it has, you know, plummeted all the way down to the bottom. Quite interesting here um, that, you know, here's our pandemic arriving and everyone going, oh, it's an online stock. Uh, everyone's going online. It's going to make an absolute fortune. Um, and then since then, it has been sort of all the way down. And, um, you know, mentioning this kind of this penny stock, um, just the fact that it's very, very low. Uh, in fact, it's the lowest it's ever been doesn't mean it can't carry on going down to zero. OK, so, you know, whatever you pay for a share, it is still possible to lose. 100% of your investment. So these guys, um, you know, in terms of their um, their market cap, their, their valuation, um, uh, you know, they're making a 17 million turnover, uh, sorry, 17 million profit, uh, 
you're paying basically 250 million uh, is the market valuation. That's about 15 times earnings. It's not cheap. It's not expensive, but it's not cheap. Um, so that's a kind of a 7% yield on their earnings. You're not getting any, any income from that. These guys, you know, they do have cash flow issues, um, which is, you know, causing them a little bit of a problem. So I think that, you know, these guys are a higher risk than most companies. I think that they will uh, continue to find uh, that they are high risk. I think that people will uh, 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 pull back on, uh, uh, you know, some of these um, these these bigger um, these bigger purchases um, uh, as they have to, you know, pay for you know uh, increased uh, energy costs. Um, they got a balance sheet of about 100 million. Um, so there's about 150 million of goodwill um, kind of baked into that price. Um, you know, I, I, we talk about investing in these guys, and, and and obviously, you know, if you're a long investor, you're betting that the share price um, is going to go from here. It's going to go up, uh, and if you're a short investor, you're going to be betting that it's going to be going um, down. And uh, you know, it, it's it's I, I'm not absolutely certain. I think that they have some problems. I think it's baked into the price. If you feel that you know this is it, they've hit the nadir. There's, there's a turning point. Um, then you know, by all means. Um, you know, gain some exposure, but realize that it could go down. And if you think, no, actually, these guys, you know, um, there's the recession coming. These guys are just going to fall over. There's no way they can survive. Um, uh, they haven't got the sort of the financial resources sitting behind them. Uh, then you might want to short them uh, and suggest that they are going to go down, um, down the swanee. But that's kind of, you know, that's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm neither, I'm neither the long or short mode. Let's put it like that. Um, so, there you have my uh, my kind of take on AOL. Um, uh, is it a good investment? I don't know. It's not for the faint hearted. It's quite an interesting company. Um, uh, I, I'm honestly, I think I bought stuff from AOL. I can't remember. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure I bought a fridge from them um, and it turned up, you know, on time and we had two perfectly nice guys who came in and they put it in and they took the old fridge away uh, and it and it was brilliant and the whole thing worked so um you know so why not so to speak um yet yeah, sometimes people want to kind of they just like to kind of you know physically hold and touch um uh you know that that product and of course you know we did a bit of research we went to uh, places like uh, uh curries you know and looked at fridges before actually buying online so you know that kind of that desire to actually hold stuff uh, i think is still there but you know you know we are being more comfortable buying fridges online buying cars online uh, and having them delivered so there you go moe there's my there's my take on aol not without its financial challenges yeah, and just just a note, uh, Ted uh, Ted mentioned AOL a few times there. It's actually oh, sorry, AOL, AOL World, not AOL. Yeah, yeah, AOL World. Uh, but but you know, it's it's so sim it's so similar in sounds. Um, but yeah, th that's that's the analysis there. So this is not financial advice. This is not even about investing. Although we talk about the share price because it's important to look at that as part of the context. But remember. The purpose for these videos is to help you improve your financial knowledge and acumen by, by being able to read financial statements more accurately. And we look at famous companies as good examples of that. So do leave a note in the comment section. Tell us how you found this video, how helpful you found it. Uh, if you have any companies you would love for us to analyze, then do leave a note in the comment section. And as always, like, share, subscribe. We will both see you on the next video. Thank you. Good to see you, Mary. Catch you later. So I hope you enjoyed that video and found it useful and informative. Now, if you want to know more about uh, what I do, then you can visit Talk Financials and find out about the training workshops uh, and the clients uh, that I work with. And the QR code uh, is on your screen right now. If you are interested in being able to do this yourself, to do some uh, financial analysis, there's a couple of resources. There is an online workshop. Uh, it's available on my website or you can click on the QR code and it'll stay, take you straight through uh, to this online workshop uh, where you can learn to read and understand and interpret financial information yourself. Alternatively, there is a book available at all good bookstops, particularly a very big online one and the QR code once again will take you through to the opportunity to buy the book uh, and there is also a Kindle edition. Um, Otherwise, that's everything from me. Please, please, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe uh, to the channel. More subscribers uh, uh, makes it uh, uh, means that you're going to get um, notification um, about uh, new videos coming up uh, and also the opportunity to you know, ask questions and do recommend any videos uh, or sorry, any companies that you'd like me uh, to analyze for you.
Um, I think we've got a couple of uh, suggested next videos coming up. Uh, so please do uh, take the opportunity, have a look at the other videos uh, and don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you on the next video.